Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin. I'm your host and thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're a regular watcher of the show, I'm going to try and get back to doing regular videos and maybe even two or three videos a week. But for now, we're going to go ahead and jump right back in and talk about another fairly controversial subject, whether or not you should eat meat whether or not you should be a vegetarian or a vegan. In order to do that, before we go down mankind's past or humankind's past, I suppose I should say, we're gonna go ahead and address our closest living relatives. So, our closest living relatives would be the chimpanzees and even further down, the gorillas. And they are what I call a fringe omnivore. An omnivore is something that eats both meat and vegetables. And they're right on the edge. They eat about 95% vegetables and only about 5% meat. And they eat that meat when they don't have enough energy or there's a famine and they need to get food from somewhere else. Their bodies can process it, but it's not what's best for them. And on the other end of omnivores, another fringe omnivore who eats mostly meat is the cat. Any kind of cat, they eat mostly meat, but they can survive on a vegan diet for a very uh, for a short amount of time. But it's not what's best for them, even though they can survive on that. So what's best for humans? If we're going to look at who we are closest to, then we should eat mostly vegetation. But we aren't chimpanzees. We have differences. I have a larger brain. I have less body hair. I'm more intelligent. I have communication. We have science and music and art and math. And we have all these things that set us apart. And to have all of those things, all those cultural benefits, there's both a cultural side and a biological side. And oddly enough, those two are more intertwined than you'd think. Take a couple steps back into human history. Once upon a time, we were hunters and gatherers, and we spent a lot of time getting our food. In order to break free of that and start developing the culture, start developing the speech, start, start developing science, math, and arts, and music, and things like that, we had to have more time. In order to get more time, we had to do two things. First of all was the invention of the fire. Because when you have food, there are different ways that your body breaks it down. First of all, you have your mouth here. You have two forms of digestion here, the chemical part of your saliva and the mechanical part of your chewing. Then once you swallow it, it's gonna go down into your stomach where you have, again, the acids that chemically break it down. And digesting your food takes a long time. It does. And that's not very good for you because it, it works very hard and you don't get to keep many calories at the end. However, if you were to cook your food over fire, it starts to break down the food beforehand and still leaves you with a lot of the calories. So once you finish digesting this food, you're going to have more calories and more energy afterwards, which means you have to spend less time getting food, whether you're going out and hunting and gathering or working the fields or raising livestock, you get to keep it for longer. And that brings us to our second point agriculture, whether it's uh, plowing fields or picking the fields or raising and slaughtering livestock, having those uh, food sources closer to home, but also all in one place, not having to walk big loops to get all the uh, nuts and fruits that you need is a really big advantage. And that gave us a lot more time to develop more things. So the name of the game is how many calories you can get in as little time. You want to get as many calories in as little time as possible, at least from an evolutionary perspective. Now, you don't necessarily want to eat like five milkshakes in 20 minutes, but we'll get to that <laughs> a little bit later. Right now, we're going to stay in mankind's past. So, we're going to talk about the density of food and how many calories are in them. So, calories, first of all, in physics is a term for energy. So, all of our energy is coming from the sun. And then plants absorb that energy and they get to keep about 10% of the energy that they absorb. And then animals like us, if we are vegetarians or other vegetarians will or omnivores will eat these plants and they get to keep about 10% of that plant's energy. So at this point, we're exactly 1% of the original sun energy. So based on that energy flow chart, it seems like it would be best to eat the plants instead of eating the animals like a cow or a chicken that ate the plants because there should be more of the original energy. Well, there are higher in vitamins and things like that, and that is good for you, of course. Vitamins have lots of advantages, and if you're eating lots of meat and you're not getting vitamins, do so. Find some ways, eat some more vegetables, get some multivitamins, something like that. But, rewind. I get distracted a lot. <laughs> All right, so, if you're trying to go down that path, you're trying to get more calories, you'd think it would be plants, but... Let's do a direct pound-by-pound pound comparison here. If you're about to eat um, a pound 
of lettuce or broccoli, you're gonna get anywhere from 100 to 150 calories, which means for the average human being who burns about 1,500 to 2,000 calories every day, you're gonna have to eat 15 to 20 pounds of lettuce and or broccoli every day to get the calories you need. And that's just not practical. It's not practical at all. You don't have enough volume. So if you were to take a pound of chicken or a pound of beef, you have anywhere from 1,000 to 1,100 calories, which seems like it would be the better deal. Especially back in time when you had to raise your livestock or you had to go out and hunt it. That minus, of course, the life-threatening part of going and hunting things, that would be a much better deal in terms of calories. But there are other things besides lettuce and meat on the scale. There's some things in the middle like legumes, nuts, um, avocados, very, very dense in calories, still not quite as dense, uh, it's about 700, I think, for some of those, anywhere from six to 800 calories per pound of those different food areas, and that's really, really good for you. Uh, if you're a vegan, if you're not a vegan, if you're vegetarian and you want to get some more calor calorically dense foods in your diet, you can have things like um, milk, dairy, eggs, cheeses, um, if you're not gluten intolerant, wheat, very, very calorically dense per pound. And some of those were animal products, not the wheat, but before that, they were animal products, so if you're a vegetarian, you can eat those. And they're very, very calorically dense. And that's very, very good for you in terms of the time. Way back in the day, that may not have been a luxury that we had, however. Nuts and berries weren't available from every place in the continent. For example, a lot of legumes were based in South America. And I, I think the, um, I think it's the peanut was based in Asia. But now with today's, uh, don't quote me on that, but something like that. And cocoa was mostly in Africa. And cocoa is another very calorically dense food. But now, with today's wonderful infrastructure where we can have any food from anywhere in the world any time of year, that's not a concern that we have anymore. If you're trying to be environmentally friendly, it's a concern you might have, but in terms of just what we can get our hands on, that's not a concern anymore. You can eat pretty much anything you want. And that brings us to another point. Today's lifestyle is a lot more sedentary. When you had to go out and plow the fields or raise your livestock stock or go hunting and gathering, you spent a lot of time walking or in some cases hunting a mastodon. And that used a lot more energy than driving to work, sitting at a desk once you got to work, going home and laying on the couch to relax, and this incredibly sedentary lifestyle that we find ourselves in, which isn't good in its own right, but we burn less calories. So we don't need as many calories as we used to to be bigger. So that brings us out of the biological perspective and into the moral question. Not just for health, because we'll get to health in a minute, there's a balance you can strike either way. To the moral question, is it okay to eat meat? And I guess it depends what you're looking at. Personally, I see a lot of issues with the way that um, meat is raised, with the amount of chickens and the amount of cows that are thrown into one place. I, I think it's incredibly cruel to see these things laying on top of each other with barely enough oxygen to stay alive, being fed things that they shouldn't eat, like chicken aren't supposed to eat corn, but we feed it to them all the time. Um, and that's not great. So from that moral perspective, I totally understand not eating meat because they've been treated unfairly. Just talking about me going and catching a fish or catching free range chicken or something like that and eating it, that's a different story. So do I think it's okay to eat meat from an evolutionary perspective? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there's a place for meat eaters. If you have a forest which can sustain 100 plant eaters, that's all there can be is the 100 plant eaters. But if we have two or three people over here, or two or three animals over here who figure out they can eat these plant eaters over here, we can have two or three animals more. And all of a sudden, this forest environment can support 102 to 103 animals. And the sick uh, vegetarians or the sick herbivores over here will be taken care of because the meat eaters want to eat the weakest ones. So it's a great way to balance things out. So I absolutely think there's a place for meat eaters, especially in a world where humans, we don't like meat eaters because they eat our animals and um, we want to eat them ourselves. So we've killed most of the predators. So in that kind of a world, absolutely. I think it's okay. The mistreatment of animals is one thing, but is it okay to eat it? I think so. Now from a health perspective, 
from a health perspective, there are, there are different things you should do. So first of all, based on your blood type, some people postulate that different blood types need different different diets. They need more or less carbs, more or less protein, and I advise you to figure out your blood type and look up that argument online and see what would be best for you. Maybe even go to a doctor, get yourself tested, see what would be best for you to eat. There are also different uh, food allergies that everyone has, even slight food allergies. You can get tested for that, for what's better or worse for you. Someone like myself who is ADHD, um, higher levels of proteins and fats really help calm down your personality. Um, I tried eating a heavily carbohydrate diet at one point and I had a lot of crashes. I had a lot of issues focusing and this is when I looked this up and talked to my doctor and found out I should be eating more protein and fats, particularly omega-3 fatty acids, which yes, you can get in uh, vitamins, but you can also get them from things like fish and other meats. So that is advantageous for me. So health is a very person by person basis, you might have one blood type or a body type and feel that vegetarianism is good for you, but it might not be good for everyone and vice versa. Meat might be good for you and not for other people. So it's very subjective and I would advise you to go see someone about it. From But from a moral perspective and a biological perspective, it's, it, it's both okay and not okay. You already heard my explanation on that. So last but not least, if you're going to eat mostly vegetables from a health perspective, you're going to eat mostly vegetables do yourself a favor, eat more calorically dense foods. And then on the other side, if you're going to eat meats, make sure that you eat enough vegetables or have some multivitamins or something to get those extra vitamins in your diet because meat usually don't have enough vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D in your diet and you need more of that. You need it or else you're going to be unhealthy. And last but not least, for everyone, please eat enough calories and then make sure that you do something active. Little PSA here. Um, if you don't like going to the gym, that's great. I totally understand that. I talked about Pokemon Go last week. The thing about Pokemon Go is it's a great natural way to want to go and get exercise because it's goal oriented rather than just one rep, two rep, three reps. So if you want to go out and exercise, go and and you don't like the gym, go laser tagging, go um, rock climbing, or go for a hike, or um, go surfing, do something outside that's active, but it doesn't have to be boring, have fun with what you're doing. Uh, there's even, uh, of course, Pokemon Go, but there are video game gyms that are being made so you can play like a first person shooter and feel all endangered and hyped up and be focusing on the task at hand rather than working out and that's great for you. So anyways, should you be a meat eater? Still, unfortunately, is fairly subjective, but we talked about why it's both good and bad. We'll see you next week with our next video. I hope you're liking this format and thanks again for watching. See you guys. Oh, if you like this video, if you like this video, rate and subscribe, like, share with everyone. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. See you guys.